<sighs> Listen, when I saw the trailer for this movie, I was fucking stoked. I could not wait to park my fat ass down in front of my TV and watch this thing. But God damn it, man. I, I, for me anyways, I'm going to have to chalk this one up into that realm of movies. It's, it's just a huge opportunity lost in my opinion. Welcome to Happy Wax TV. Okay, so before we get off this, even started here, I'm just going to say I'm probably going to get into some spoilers just to talk about this movie. So if you don't want to hear spoilers, then just click the video off. Um, for my rating, I'm probably going to give this movie like a 4 out of 10. Uh, again, it's on Netflix now, so you can go watch it. I mean, Netflix, really, if you break it down, you're literally paying pennies a day to watch movies. So as I say with everything, whether I like them or don't like them, go watch this movie and then you can see what I'm talking about. Um, but if you do want to hear spoilers, then uh, sit back and let's get into it. I'll try and keep this one short. So anyways, The Block Island Sound, it is written and directed by the McManus brothers. And it's got a fairly good cast in it, really. Um, Chris Neville plays Harry. Uh, Michaela McManus is Audrey, their brother and sister. And then Neville Archibald. It's, it's nice to see him back on, on, you know, film again. He plays Tom. He's their father. Um, if you don't recognize him, I mean, he's the bad guy landlord from uh, 13 and 14 cameras. I mean, you can't, you can't miss the look this gentleman has. It's, it's fantastic. So, but anyways, um, let me give you the synopsis quick and then we'll, we'll get into this, this movie. Something lurks off the coast of Block Island, silently influencing the behavior of fisherman Tom Lynch. Um, after suffering a series of violent outbursts, he unknowingly puts his family in grave danger. Okay, well, Tom, played by Neville Archibald, is having these sleepwalking, or at least we think they're sleepwalking episodes, and we learn all this in the first 20 minutes of this movie, okay? So, Audrey has moved away, she now has a daughter, okay? And I believe her title, is she's an oceanographer, I think that's what she is. Um, but Harry, played by Chris Sheffield, is, is the son, and he's stayed on the island to look after his father. Um, you know, and we're kind of opened up in the first act to these, these sleepwalking episodes that he has, because he, he'll wake up in the middle of the night, and then he'll go on his boat, and then he'll disappear and come back in the morning, and sometimes he looks roughed up, or the boat looks, you know, all messed up, or, or whatever, and you're kind of thinking, like, what, what's going on here? Do you know what I mean? So, like, the first 20 minutes of this movie we're going through this, okay, and we're learning about these characters and their background, and we're learning that Harry has, like, anger issues, and, you know, the mother's passed on, and, and, and Tom's been drinking, and they kind of relate his episodes to the drinking, but then there's a scene, or, or a part of the, the first act, where, like, all these fish are dying, and we've read about this, uh, this is a real thing, we've actually learned about this, if you watch any news clips on it, where all these flocks of birds will just fall from the sky, or you know, tons and tons of fish will, dead fish will wash up on shore. So this happens on their island. So um, because Audrey is an oceanographer, they call her in to have a look at it. So she comes there with her, her daughter and then one of her partners. And, uh, but, you know, she's staying at the house now where, where, because that's where her family lives. But while she's there, Tom has an episode. He goes out on the boat and then he doesn't come back. Okay, so they assume that he's dead. Harry doesn't believe it. He thought or thinks that he's attacked just because of some clues on the boat. The police aren't offering any help or very little anyways, and they can't find the body. Okay. So then we go a little bit forward and then his body washes up on shore and his face is all kind of beat up. Okay. So Harry thinks that he got attacked. Okay. And from this point on, from the funeral on for the next hour, is where this movie lost me, okay? It didn't lose, not in the sense that I didn't know what was going on. I, I, I mean, it's almost obvious what's, what's going to happen at the end. But it's just, it's the pacing and the storytelling because, like, this is one of these movies where our main character, who is Harry, has shit happening to him, okay, with these blackouts. And now he's starting to do the sleepwalking thing and the electronics are, are messing with his mind and, and, and almost hypnotizing him to do things right? And he knows this is going on, but it's one of these movies where he doesn't tell anybody, okay? He just continually gets more angry when people question him and try and help him. 
And I don't know why they filmed it like this because it's almost an hour and it's almost an hour of nothing happening except for this drama that Chris, or sorry, uh, Harry brings to this screen to his character and I'm, it didn't work. It didn't work for me. It took me right out of this fucking movie because I'm being honest, the first 20 minutes of this movie is great because you're like, what the fuck is happening here? And why is he doing this? And it's, you know, and it kind of sucks you in. And the last 20 minutes of this movie is fantastic. Okay, I really enjoyed that. But the problem is, it's this not, it's the one hour in between and it just takes you right out of the fucking movie because it's so boring and annoying. And you're almost like pissed off at Harry for the way he's acting. And it's like, like there's no suspense, nothing. It's just, I know they're trying to build his character arc. But for me, it didn't work. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? And like, listen, I don't base my reviews on anyone else's reviews, but I did, I kind of thought like, maybe is it just me? Like, am I the only one like that wasn't buying into this movie? But I went online, you know, and there's a whole bunch of other people that said the same thing that like the, the in-between portion of this movie, it, it's not good. It's, it's boring as fuck. And it's, it's just annoying. Like it's just one scene after another of, of Harry, you know, getting pissed off and going to the doctors, you know, pissed off, going to the bar to get drunk. You know what I mean? It's like, there's a few scenes in that span that help the movie along, but for the majority, like they, uh, I don't know. It just took me right out of it, man. Now the ending is fantastic. Okay. Like you, Listen, this, is, this movie's been done before a bunch of times, okay? The first movie that came to, to my thoughts was um, that Mila Jovovich movie. I think it's called The Fourth Kind. It's kind of the same premise as that, but, I mean, that movie just kept moving, and there was, like, shocking scenes in that movie and creepy scenes. And there's nothing like that in here, especially in that one hour. It's just, it, turns, it goes from a horror movie to a fucking drama <laughs> for an hour and then it kind of kicks back into a science fiction horror movie and if you listen really carefully too when they do get to the island and this is what kind of what gave the ending away to me some people will pick it up some people won't but there's a scene where um audrey's daughter uh emily goes out with with harry and they they capture these frogs right so when they come back um audrey asks why she captured the frog and she goes well mommy you do the same thing with fish so she says this, there's a scene in the movie where she gives an explanation as to what she does, where they, they pick certain fish from the water to look at these few fish to save, you know, masses of amount of fish, okay? And as soon as she gave this, this speech to her daughter, I thought, that's going to be the fucking ending of the movie. That, that's exactly what they're doing. And you'll see what I mean when we, when we go along, because Harry, after his dad dies, kind of picks up where Tom left off, where he gets these signals telling him to bring certain things, like certain living things, like a, a deer or a dog, and then near the end, you know, a, a girl sort of thing. You know what I mean? And, and when it's all explained to you at the end, then you'll immediately think back to her speech that she gave to her daughter. And it's like, oh yeah, these aliens are doing to us exactly what we're doing to these fish. We're picking out one or two fish studying them and then plopping them back into the water some make it some don't and that's exactly what's happening here and it's it's a good idea you know what i mean and i mean i don't know are aliens good or aliens bad i don't know i've never encountered any so i guess until i meet one i won't know so but you know the whole trick to this movie is is, is you're thinking that they're being attacked and they're doing harm but if you stop and think about it, really, maybe what they're doing is good and they're just selectively choosing certain people to help them so they can study and maybe help the human population because for the majority it's fucked anyway. <laughs> so, you know what I mean? So it's kind of that misdirection sort of thing. So, and I, I did like that. I did like the ending, but Jesus, Murphy, it's getting to the fucking end. It's that one hour, so. Whew, I don't know. Anyways, listen, it's on Netflix now go watch it. I mean, Netflix is literally cents a month. It really is. It's, what is it, 13 bucks or something like that? So, I mean, you're really paying nothing to watch this movie. You know, I'm going to give it a four out of 10. I just, I just couldn't get past that one hour 
of just nothingness, more or less, in, in this movie. I, I get character building, but at some point you have to fucking jazz it up a bit. And this, it just, I don't know, man. <laughs> it just it's fu- took me right out of the fucking movie. So anyways, it's out now on Netflix. It's called The Block Island Sound. Please go, go watch it if you haven't. Um, and again, before you, you know, start swearing at me in the comments for giving spoilers, I, I had the huge spoiler banner right on the fucking thumbnail. So, um, but yeah, go check this movie out and then let me know what you thought of it. And yeah, I don't know. I just, the ending was good and the first 20 minutes was good, but it's that hour in between just couldn't get past it. And it fucking took me right out of it. So anyways, out now on Netflix, let me know what you think guys. And until next time, stay scared.